Welcome to There's No Place Like Home, the radio show coming to you on WRXB 1590 AM and Pinellas County Connection TV. This program is presented to you as an opportunity to hear information that can help you fulfill the dream of owning your very own home. We also share information about upcoming special events, programs, and other items of interest to help you enjoy the good life here in Pinellas County. The sponsor of this program is the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County, which offers the First Time Home Buyers Program, your key to home ownership, helping people in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties make their dreams of home ownership a reality. I'm Jane Merlin alongside Frank Bowman, your host for today's show. Frank, how are you today? I'm doing very well, Jane. How are you this today? I'm doing quite well, and uh, you know, once again, we have a very interesting topic to let people know about. We certainly do, and um, it's it's a topic that's getting in the media more often lately with very positive things. Uh, our very interesting program today will be talking about public transportation, and we're going to be touching on the relationship between the availability of good public transportation and uh, its relationship to affordable housing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of talk in the housing community about uh, about how to link up with public transportation and, and all around the country. It's becoming a very uh, important topic. Uh, c- to talk about that in a few minutes, we'll be joined by Bob Lasher from the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, PSTA. Before we get into that topic today, uh, Jane, I uh, understand you have a message from our sponsor, the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County. I do. Speaking of housing, yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> um, the Housing Finance Authority, or HFA, is offering its first-time home buyers program for individuals, as I said earlier, in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties who have never owned a home, have not owned a home in the last three years, or veterans. The HFA offers a low rate on its 30-year fixed-rate home key first mortgage, and if you need a little help with down payment and closing costs, they can help you with that also with the home key second mortgage. Mortgage. To get your key to home ownership, call 727 464 8210 or visit the website at www.pinellascounty.org slash community slash HFA. And to reach us for more information or comments about the show, call us at that same number, 727 464 8210, or email us at Housing Finance Authority at Pinellas County. Org. You can also catch past shows by logging on to the website, and you can also catch us on YouTube. And Frank, I would be remiss if I didn't also uh, remind people about the Proud Pinellas program, which is the county's housing initiative for veterans, mm-hmm. where we were able to, through the use of federal neighborhood stabilization program funds, purchase foreclosed properties, renovate them, really improve and enhance the neighborhoods in which those houses are, and now we can sell them to our very deserving veterans at great prices. Right, and the folks want information about that program, they just contact the same phone numbers you gave a minute ago. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that great information, Jane. Well, right now, it's my pleasure to welcome today's guest to the show to discuss an important issue that affects each of us, public transportation. Bob Lasher is the External Affairs Officer for the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, or PSTA. Bob has been with PSTA for eight and a half years, so he has a lot of great insight into the organization and its operations. Welcome to There's No Place Like Home, Bob. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Well, we're very happy to have you here and an opportunity to share this uh, important topic with our listeners and viewers. Uh, Let's start out with a brief introduction of what PSTA does. We operate the transit system, the bus system, in Pinellas County. We were created in 1982 by the legislature and our our own governmental entity, our own taxing authority. If you're a property owner, you look at the bottom of your trim notice, there's a little line down there to PSTA, and that's where we get our funding. And a lot of people don't realize it, but public transit here and all around the world is all uh, uh, funded in part by the taxpayers, by governments. And... and, uh, it's something we're trying to get more and more out of because we're at a point now where we can't respond to the demand for transit, which is the good problem to have. Yes, it is. Uh, and, uh, of course, we've seen uh, reports over the last year. Almost every month there's a new ridership record. Uh, what are those numbers, and, and how have they changed in the last year or so? In the last year, uh, well, I'm going to back up a little more because I don't remember the exact last year, mm-hmm. uh, but we have carried more than 14.1 million riders in the uh, 
last fiscal year, which is an all-time record. We have been breaking our all-time ridership records for just individual months and for years, going back at least three years. We've increased ridership 20% since the recession in 2008, and that's also on top of having to reduce service by about 8% because we've lost those property tax revenues. So we've cut service, streamlined, and we're seeing demands a lot of the times we can't meet. Even during low ridership periods of the day, we're having to put out extra buses to pick passengers up because the normal ones are full. Well, that's a great thing. Uh, it basically shows that people who perhaps started riding the bus through some sort of economic necessity uh, have found that it's actually much more convenient to do so. Um, what is the uh, cost of riding the bus for a general ride? It's a $2 one-way fare, mm -hmm. and you can pay it right on the bus. If you're going to use cash, it's exact change only, and that's for security. There's no access to money on buses, and that's standard around mm -hmm. the country. That, that uh, protects people from crime. You can get an all-day ticket for $4.50, unlimited rides, and for seniors, special citizens, folks with disabilities, it's half that. Okay, and that fare on the bus, that's... Uh change or dollar bills, correct? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, not just single dollars, but if you're buying multiple fares, you can put five, tens, twenties in the fare box. Just keep in mind, there's no way to get change. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to get extra extra fare cards. And they're good forever. So if you buy five fare cards, five daily cards, and you only use one, the others won't expire until you activate it someday in the future. Oh, that's good. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, now, people who are got the habit of commuting every day uh, on the bus. You have some other alternatives, too, in terms of uh, monthly passes? Yes. You can get a 31-day unlimited pass for uh, $65, and then it's about half that, $35 for uh, seniors and special citizens. Isn't there a special, too, sometimes during the summer for students, a student okay. pass? or It's called our Summer Youth Hall Pass. Ah, there uh, we go. And it is student ages for up to 18 years old, $35 from, uh, it, <clears throat> let me get this right now, I think it's May 1st through September 15th, and it's unlimited rides all summer long. And the idea is we want to foster kids uh, to ride transit, to take advantage of the system and learn about it at a young age, give them a chance to get to the job, their friends, the beach, whatever, and get used to it because then they tend to keep riding as they get older. And it's a lot what you were alluding to earlier in that uh, once people learn how to do it, they stay with us. And we see that all the time. When gas prices go up, we'll see a spike in ridership. When they come back down, they stay with us because they realize it's a lot easier than they originally thought. And it's, you know, um, there are some issues with convenience, but once you learn how to schedule your, your rides and everything else, it, it is quite uh, effective. There's been some national reports out lately talking about the fact that the, the younger generation is not as interested in driving and, and owning cars. Mm -hmm. And that probably has, is related in some way to the increased bus ridership. We've, we've heard, we've seen, I've watched those. I mean, there are a lot of them out there. That coupled with one that came out a few months ago from AP that the American, the average American family can no longer afford to buy a new car. And we're, we're seeing a translation in transit across the country. And we were wondering for a while at PSDA, we were looking at some of these incredible ridership numbers, even in times when there weren't outside factors that are the norm, say spiking gas prices or spring break or something that would boost it. And the numbers were really high. And I got a call the other day uh, from a reporter. We started talking about it, and it looks like that's playing a role in it. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely some, some great benefits for folks who enjoy the use of public transportation. Now, um, we talked about the passes that people can purchase those in advance. Where can they get those passes? Do they have to go to the bus itself can they get get them there or there's some online opportunities for that we've got a lot of opportunities thanks for asking uh on the bus you can buy daily passes uh, unlimited daily passes you can pay one-way fares you can get them online at our online ticket store that's psda.net and the online ticket store if you look just to the right side of the home page you can click right there we'll send them to you in the mail you can also get them at various locations throughout the county, including CVS and Amscot, hmm. Ace Cash Express, and several independent, actually numerous independent locations. And you can get to those on the website as well. Just uh, click the little tab up top called Riding PSDA, and you can 
look for where the fares are, and they'll show you all the ticket outlets and locations. And speaking of technology, (laughs) as I transition into this next question that I had for you, um, something I found very interesting was the real-time system. Tell us what that's all about. I love the real-time system. <laughs> it's, this is, uh, and, and actually it's one of our stimulus projects. Real-time bus information system ties all of our buses into GPS tracking. So we know where every vehicle is at any time. And if you go to ridepsda.net, that's R-I-D-E, P-S-T-A dot net, you've got a little program. It's really easy to access, whether you're on a computer or one of the new smartphones. You can either put in your stop number, you can search your stop by location, uh, or call up a route map of your, your bus's route and either follow the bus as it comes to you or get a little chart, whichever you choose, to show when your next bus is arriving at the stop within 30 minutes. And it'll count down minute by minute. And as a rider, to me, that's one of the biggest developments in PSDA history because now with the heat and the thunderstorms Mm -hmm. and the weather we face in Florida, you don't have to sit at the stop. You can wait inside nearby and know exactly when that bus is approaching and head out just before it gets there. I think that's really awesome. And the other thing is that you actually have an app for iPhone with the same technology, right? Yes, absolutely. And I, I hear this one for Android. I have not downloaded it yet because on my phone, I mean, to get to it, I just bookmark it. It opens mm-hmm. up. It opens right to the page. And then I can put in, depending upon what route I'm riding, the route and then the stop number. There are also QR codes on all the signs at the stop, so you can click on that, and that'll help out. You can text. You can phone for people who aren't smartphone savvy. Use your computer. There are lots of ways. You call our info line, talk with one of our representatives. They use it all the time. They'll find out where you are and tell you when the next bus is coming. Isn't it amazing how technology and transportation are coming together in such a great way? This this system is really neat because a lot you know everybody who rides focuses on okay when's my next bus coming, Mm -hmm. but it has other fun benefits as well. Uh, it allows uh, uh, automated announcements for stops on the bus, automated scrolling screens. So for perhaps people with disabilities, they can hear and see maybe what the driver wouldn't be doing. So the, they're automatically announced as you're riding along. The bus is also in communication with our maintenance department. So if the transmission fluid or the oil or something is starting to go wrong in the bus, it automatically contacts maintenance. They can call the bus in before it breaks down and have it fixed. That's amazing. And that's not that, that's done mechanically and com- by computer, and the bus driver is is not having to focus right. on any of those issues. It's tied into or the new hybrids are smart buses. Mm-hmm. The reason they're smart buses is because of the. Uh, plethora of computer banks in those buses for everything and you just tap into those and they will let maintenance know if there's a problem and even some of the older buses that that are not the hybrids have that technology it's really it's really fun now are the hybrid buses also incorporating some sort of uh, uh, alternative fuels or 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 energy yes sir they're diesel electric hybrid and i you know i didn't know much about hybrid cars or buses before 2009 when our board finally made the decision and they debated it for a while to go with the new buses they are more expensive they're probably about uh, 600,000 base where a standard bus is 400 mm. but over the life of the bus between the savings in maintenance and the savings in fuel they figured it would at least break even and if fuel goes up we should do even better They're getting um, 56% on average fuel economy improvement. Ones that run on Gulf Boulevard out on the beach is a 67% improvement in fuel economy. And they use a big electric power cell, a battery. Mm -hmm. And that's what starts the bus. And then at about 23, 24 miles an hour, a 262 horsepower diesel engine, that's really small if you're not familiar with diesel engines, starts to take over and then it's running on diesel. So the, it's got a small engine, so the amount of uh, 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 exhaust fumes and pollutants are vastly cut over. Well, I, over buses that were out just a few years ago, 90 to 100 percent cuts across the board in exhaust and fumes. How many how many buses uh, are in the fleet right now, and, and what proportion are these newer buses? We have 188 of the full-size buses. We have seven of the smaller ones that run on the North County routes, and we have 32 diesel-electric hybrids. We have eight more on order. And thanks to our uh, record ridership this past year, 
We have come in under budget, so we're going to put, it looks like now, maybe about $3 million to buying additional hybrids to replace some of the older buses because our fleet, uh, actually compared to most of our peer cities across the country, we get tremendous miles per bus, Mm -hmm. and we've got some tired buses we need to replace. Well, and um, you all have been successful in getting grants, too, in 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 procuring some of those buses, haven't you? Yeah, actually, right now, all of our buses are paid for with federal dollars, and that's how the federal government contributes to transit systems across the country. As I mentioned earlier, all, all public transit is subsidized. Well, this is one way the federal government does it. They will buy the buses, but then they make the local operators pay the expenses, the, the salaries, the mechanics, the drivers. And by doing it that way, it prevents local systems from expanding beyond what they really need, what their means are. But we have to run them 12 years. And in Pinellas County, when you run a bus 12 years, by 12 years, it's tired. Mm -hmm. So uh, this year, we're actually probably going to put some extra local money that we have into replacing the buses. Hmm. And I know one of the the things that, that we keep an eye out is... As Frank mentioned earlier, as it relates to housing, many many times those grants are tied to not only the location and access to transportation. Um, you know, it it, it has a, mm-hmm. a definite effect in your being able to get some of those grants. So it's very important. And and when there are competitive uh, funding opportunities, either from the federal government or from the state's housing programs, uh, projects that are located on bus routes uh, are given a priority in, mm-hmm. in ranking. And uh, a lot here in Pinellas County, a lot of the affordable housing projects we create are also uh, approved more readily if they're on you know, bus routes. And a lot of times the site uh, development requirements include the installation of a bus stop and things mm-hmm. like that. Because when we're doing affordable rental housing, uh, we want to uh, enable our residents, our tenants, to, to, to use the bus system. Uh, just real quickly, do you have numbers on what it costs to own and run a car versus what it would cost to, to get around on a bus? Because I think a lot of people think $2 every time I get on the bus, that's a lot of money. But in comparison to owning a car, how is that? Yes, I do. And when I first saw these, I looked at it and said, you got to be kidding me, and did more research, and it kept coming back the same way. According to AAA, and this came out just a couple months ago, it's now averaging $9,000 a year per car ownership. That's the average in the country. PSDA costs $65 a month to ride the bus, unlimited rides every day. So you're looking at about $800, $8,200 in savings a year if you can get rid of a car and ride the bus. And this is why we are working so hard to try to expand the bus system, because when you consider the cost of owning a car, the fact that the average family can no longer afford a new car, we need options. And, mm-hmm. and the options come with tremendous fringe benefits, cutting demand for gasoline and oil, they're commodities. When the demand goes up, the price goes up. Cutting pollution, uh, cutting congestion for those people who don't ride the bus. And there are always going to be people who don't ride the bus. We, we only run 40 routes. So imagine what you know if you were driving, you only had 40 roads to, to go on, what it would be like. So we realize there are a lot of people who, who need their cars and will always use their cars. I wanted to um, talk a little bit about the opportunities for uh, transportation, that it's the Transportation Disadvantaged Program. Can you explain what that is for folks? That, yes, that's a state program, and it's it's got a few levels, uh, and it, it tries to help people out who uh, are, are based on income to get either monthly passes or uh, 10 daily passes to get, say, to and from job interviews, to and from uh, medical appointments. And you actually would apply. You can apply through PSDA. Just call our main number, uh, 540-727-540-1900, and we'll steer you through the process. But it's, uh, I think it's $8.40 now for a monthly pass and uh, about half of that for the 10-day pass. And we see, you know, a lot of people look at that and say, well, that's just not enough. And I, it was about three weeks ago, bumped into a lady uh, not far from where we're recording at our, our terminal here in uh, downtown Clearwater and was talking to her about using the bus. She's a single mom. She's about my age. 
and her car was totaled. And she's enrolled uh, in a program at SPC. She's almost got uh, St. Petersburg College, by the way, in Clearwater. She's almost got her degree, and she had to decide, do I continue, do I get my degree, or do I replace my car? And she said, I'm going to get my degree because that's what's best for me and my son in the future. Problem being, we have a very underfunded transit system for our population. And PSDA, for the most part, is... Uh, can be summed up as sun up to sundown service. We've got some later service, but not a lot. And we'll get you to SPC. We can do that, but the evening classes, they have to get home some some other way. And she said, I have to rely on my friends, my family. That's another reason we're trying to get more service out there because we have to do a better job. But she's on the TD program, and it really is helping her get that degree and move her life and her family forward. So she uses that special service to go home after class at night. Uh, actually, her classes, she said they run late enough that her family has to give her a ride or her friends. And we're working with the provost of St. Petersburg College. He's uh, been helping us to work to get the word out about uh, trying to improve transit, change our funding, because he sees it all the time. It's a very busy route, but the evening classes, they end, our, our service is ending too early to get people home, and we just don't have the funding to put more service out there right now. So it's an interesting... Uh I guess a good thing, bad thing. Mm -hmm. yes, we, we're increasing ridership, more people are using it. Um, but you also mentioned that the revenues from this year's increased ridership are enabling you to put more buses on the road. Well, we're, we're going to be able to buy some new buses, replacement buses, and we are now uh, just actually, we had our first public hearing for our budget this week. We have some options to add some later service, a few runs later in the evening, maybe a few in the morning or on weekends. And what we're trying to do now is determine where we're going to put that out there. It's not, not nearly enough, but it's something. And that something's better than nothing. So um, we may be able to get one more later run, say, to SPC or up and down US-19, which is our busiest route. Uh, that's something we're working on right now, because we have demands from every corner of the county and we've got to figure out where we can get the best ridership for the dollar i was curious to learn too that you have a get this name right north county connection uh, connector north county connector that actually goes from pinellas to hillsborough county which is an interesting um, option for folks how did that come about that came about uh that was years in the making we have a very transit unfriendly area in North County. When you drive up there and you see these uh, walled communities that are way back off of the main thoroughfares, require people if they're going to walk to meander through these complexes to get to a bus stop, it just doesn't work. So we were looking for a way to get bus service and offer something up there and saw something that Hart had been experimenting with across the bay and elsewhere in the country. We use buses that are uh, if you're familiar with it, akin to the shuttle buses at Tampa International going from the parking terminal uh, to the garage, mm -hmm. getting a back and forth. And these will go on a regular route. There are three of them. And then you can call up to two hours in advance and ask them to deviate up to three quarters of a mile off the route, and it'll pick you up at your, your curb. Mm -hmm. And it'll do the same to drop you off. And these smaller buses, we did a lot of research and a lot of outreach can get through these communities. The people who live in the communities don't mind them because they're quiet. They're not like the big diesel buses. So we introduced that uh, December 10th last year. And we were not sure what we were going to get. We've got one that runs Main Street, Dunedin, and they pretty much all go to Countryside Mall because that was by far the number one destination uh, of on all the feedback we got through North County, which we did for about eight, nine months. Uh, one that goes up through Palm Harbor, and then another that goes, and they all connect to each other as well as PSTA routes, and another that goes uh, by Hillsborough Avenue over to the Northwest Transit Center for Hart. So it connects with Hillsboro and, and connects at a point where you can get throughout Hillsboro and Tampa. And ridership, I just got the latest report yesterday, has gone through the roof. It's, it's wonderful to see. And again, there's another problem where well, now we can't meet demand, but that's the good problem you want. You want that problem because it means people want to ride and there's a demand. And I see it on Saturdays all the time, and there's no room on that bus. It's, it's, it's very popular. So it's not just commuters to work. It's folks using it on the weekends as well. Absolutely. We have both of them. About 50% of our riders, a little more than 50% now, say they commute to and from work. 
Unfortunately, a lot of them are going one way. We do have stop data. As I said, we, we don't have service that can accommodate second and third shift workers. So we know that a whole lot of our daily riders are only going either to or from work, and they're having to find another way to get, get to their jobs or get home. But this is, this, that service has done really well in North County. You know, we would be really remiss if we didn't mention and highlight some of the drivers that you have that are actually getting folks from point A to point B. And I heard that recently there was a driver who celebrated over 30 years accident free. (laughs) Yeah. In fact, uh, there should be posters inside the bus if you're riding. His name is Dave Beck. And 30, he's driven 38 years, 37 of them without of what we call a preventable accident. That's an accident that, that he could have prevented. And the one accident that happened a few years ago was when he was driving at a terminal and his outside mirror just hit the mirror of another bus and broke it. Oh. That's it. <laughs> and we, we did calculations, I guess, three or four years ago that if you if you put his mileage on, he would have driven to and from the moon half a dozen times or more. Wow. Uh, but it's, it's really remarkable. And, and you've got other stories like that where you do have some long-term drivers and they're doing a great service. And, and we talked earlier, too, about the fact that you've got some folks that have an interesting background. A lot of them. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. Those of us, and, and I'm in my 50s now, who grew up with Ralph Cramden and the Honeymooners. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, that is, that is, those, <laughs> he is not PSDA. <laughs> we have PhDs on staff. We have a lot of retired police, fire, and military. In fact, our driver of the year, Julio, is a former tank commander, uh, and he drives and loves it. Um, it's truly a remarkable, remarkable group of people, and it's really my honor to work with them. Because let me tell you, navigating a 40-foot bus through the roadways on the most densely populated county in Florida is something I could never do. I just I don't know how they do it. It's something I, I'm just not suited for, and I know a lot of other people aren't either. That is really demanding. And add to that, you've got 40 to 50 lives in the palm of your hand. Their safety is your responsibility. That is a lot of responsibility. And I try to use the bus on a, uh, as often as I can, and the the drivers are are just wonderful. They, if you're if you're not a, a seasoned rider, they are very eager to help you with information and let you know what stops and where to go and what kind of transfers. So your staff is doing a wonderful job, and it's probably part of why your your ridership well, is so you. high. Well, thank you. I will I will pass along, and I do agree. They they are something mm-hmm. else. It, it's really we work with them and and give them training, try to help them out. And, uh, you know, I deal with the public in my job, too, and it's not always easy. It mm-hmm. can be demanding. And, and uh, they, I am just so impressed by our, our uh, fleet of drivers. Well, would you like to, we've only got a less, <laughs> less than a couple of minutes here, repeat the, uh, the contact information for people to either go online or, or call up and get information. Sure, sure. Uh, all things PSDA are found at our website, which is psda.net. That's psda.net. And uh, Ride PSDA is, is the real-time bus information. You can call if you're new to the whole thing and you want to speak with a live person, uh, mostly daylight hours up until about 8 o'clock on, on weekdays, 727-540-1900. That's our info line. And anything you need to know about PSDA, you can get there as well. That's 540-1900. Well, that's great information. And uh, unfortunately, we're almost out of time. But we do look forward to... Uh, continuing to hear about PSTA and our public transportation issues um, over the next year or so, and we really appreciate you being here today. Uh, We'd like to thank Bob Lasher, uh, who is uh, from Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, PSTA. We'd also like to thank Pinellas County Communications Department for helping produce this show, and of course, our friends at WRXB 1590 AM. Be sure to join us next month, and please contact us if you'd like more information about the show or would like to provide feedback. I'm Frank Bowman. And I'm Jane Merlin. Thank you for tuning in, and remember, there's There's no no place place like like home. home.